so I'm going to talk about this low energy home that I designed. It's about a block away, as John said, on Cushing Road. But first, let me tell you why. Energy matters. Now, on the heels of an election, it's a relief to say that this is truly a bipartisan issue. You can pick your poison. Climate change, dependence on foreign oil, financial instability, personal loss, and financial loss. Our unyielding thirst for energy fuels these unnecessary evils. So what are we doing with all this energy? Where does it go? Well, in the US, our buildings alone actually account for more energy than our industrial and transportation sectors. And our homes, the things that we all have in common, account for 22% of this primary energy use. Now, while our existing homes are our greatest challenge to retrofit, our new homes, new construction, is really the low-hanging fruit. Here in New England, it's no surprise that with this wonderfully cold climate, uh, the majority of this energy goes towards space heating. And what happens around this time of year is that our homes start this vicious cycle. We are generating this heat to keep us warm, but then we're continuously losing this heat through our homes, which are really very leaky and poorly insulated. So the challenge is clear. By designing, building, and retrofitting our homes to be both airtight and well insulated, we can realize significant reductions in energy use. This is this critical intersection between energy and architecture. And I'm driven, I'm excited, and I'm challenged by the, the challenge of making energy efficiency beautiful. Now, this is not a challenge that I take on alone. My firm's expertise spans the fields of architecture, engineering, and finance. We take a holistic and calculated approach to designing these low energy homes and buildings. And our process is marked by informed decision making. We're considering not just design, but energy performance, comfort, and durability throughout our design process. Which brings me back to Brookline to tell you not just about this house, but about this lifestyle. Now, as an architect, my primary responsibilities include uh, design, project management, and marriage counseling. So I, I was a bit taken back when this particular client uh, approached us about designing a home not for one couple, but for two. Uh, they weren't looking for a home with an in-law suite. We've, we've done that before. Uh, but they were looking for a truly multi-generational home, a place where three generations could cohabitate under one roof. Now, the resulting home is about 200 square foot larger than an average size home in the Northeast. Now, from an energy and resource efficiency standpoint, uh, this is really where the story starts. But before I talk about the house, I've got to talk about the location. Um, as you all know, being here in Brookline, uh, it's extremely uh, close to public transportation and great walking and bike paths. And most importantly, the home uh, allows one of the homeowners to walk to work. And the, for the other, it affords it a mere eight mile commute. So thinking back to that transportation energy, the location is particularly important. Water is another scarce resource. We're able to gather all of the water on site, whether it's falling on the ground or on the roof, and store it in two large cisterns. The water can be used for irrigation, and it also slowly replenishes the groundwater instead of dumping that water into the town's stormwater system. But back to energy. So what we've realized here is about a 70% reduction from a code-built equivalent. So I'm going to walk through the sort of measures that we've taken to get here relative to this code-built home. Uh, I'm going to start with the building envelope to talk about how we're conserving, the, conserving energy. 
and then focus on the things inside the house that use energy, and finally, the thing on the roof that offsets it. So here in New England, cold climate, we have to heat our homes, and we lose about a third of that heat because our homes are leaky. This home has a continuous air barrier. What this means is that it keeps the perfectly conditioned air inside the house where it belongs. It's something that we've detailed on paper. It's been implemented in the field. And it's something that we can verify. We can test it with this blower door test at various stages in, of construction to ensure that it's working to the standard that we've set. Now, insulation. In conventional homes, we like to put our insulation within a wood stud cavity. Now, this is sort of like um, if we were to think of our body. I have fat in my body. It keeps me warm. This is true. But no amount of fat in my body is going to eliminate the need for a winter coat when I go outside in the dead of winter. Our homes are really no different. So this home has this fat, this cavity insulation, uh, but it also has a really warm winter coat, snow pants, and down boots. Again, we design it on paper, and in the field, you can see that the orange air barrier has been wrapped in this mineral wool insulation. And we've even treated the foundation both above and below grade to create this continuous blanket that wraps the home. Now, the windows are sort of like the ski mask in my analogy. They're well insulated and triple glazed. What this means is that they allow the warm summer sun in, uh, excuse me, the warm winter sun in to help heat the home. And at night, once the sun goes down, this triple glazing helps to keep the heat inside the house where we want it. So now we can go inside to the mechanical systems. We've significantly reduced the need to heat the home. We have a high efficiency boiler that produces hot water, not just for space heating, but also for, hot, for domestic hot water use. We have a cooling system that's efficient, but pretty typical to what you might see uh, in another home in the neighborhood. Most importantly, we have a ventilation system because this home is airtight. And so we introduce mechanical ventilation with an energy recovery ventilator, or an ERV. And what this piece of equipment does is it takes the stale air from inside the house and exhausts it outside. And it takes fresh air from outside and brings it in. But in the process, it essentially reclaims or transfers the thermal properties of that perfectly conditioned outgoing air and transfers it to the fresh air that's coming in. Now, also inside the house, we can make efficient choices for lighting, relying on fluorescence and LEDs. And our appliances are not only Energy Star certified, but they exceed the standard by about 20 to 30%. Now, I can't forget the one thing that I really can't control, the homeowner. And I can you know, rest assured that I'm sure that they will use this house efficiently, but they're really the last piece of this puzzle. So now that we've, um, now that we've squeezed all of the energy that we can possibly squeeze out of this house, we can put a small PV or solar array on the roof. Even with a little bit of shading from the surrounding trees, it'll still offset about 20% of the projected energy use. And so here's the result. It's this 70%, 70 to 80% reduction in energy compared to what we were required to build. Now, this is one house, two families, and three generations embracing this low energy lifestyle. I challenge you to join them, to remember that energy conservation starts with the homes that we design, build, and retrofit, and the lifestyle choices that we make, both big and small. Thank you.